We've got lots to cover today. I will not take up all of your day, but it's going to be fun. So I hope you're ready to talk all things about the two. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, I want to first start off, um, obviously, read the article in People, uh, where you found out about baby number two and how that happened, the news. It was right before shooting that you found out about baby number two. How, how did that all go down? <laughs> I should say, that was our first suspicion. Okay. And I, I immediately dismissed it. <laughs> so it was about a week later when we got home when I actually took a test because I didn't feel pregnant at all. I just was allergic to my face wash suddenly, or I just had really sensitive skin. I don't know if it's like an allergy, but yeah, using the same face wash basically my whole life. And suddenly my skin was on fire and that was super weird, which is a thing. It didn't happen with Helen happened with the second baby. I don't know. Um, Isn't that crazy though? It's really weird. Bizarre. Was it, did you think anything beyond that? Like, was no. it, it, yeah. And then my friend who's the esthetician was like, are you pregnant? And I was like, no, I'm not. And that was that. So, so, so this, this, this seems to happen then if the esthetician asked if you were pregnant. So this, you're not the only one, it seems. It's apparently a thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. And uh, so she called it. And then a week later when I got home and took a test and then went to the doctor. Then I called her and it was like, so you remember what you said? <laughs> Turns out, yeah. So now now when you when you had found out the news, um, obviously very special for you guys for baby baby number two. Wasn't there a point where you didn't know if you'd actually be able to have um another child? Um sort sort of. It was it was just that she It had, was a mild concern, but it was mostly just well, a hesitancy was, to even try. We would have right. never we would have never known that there was the problem until we had a kid, except for that Aaron had had surgery and they saw something we're like this might be a problem. But and then then, it ended up being no problem at all. Yeah. So I don't know. Um <laughs> the doctors warned us it could be a problem and then it wasn't. So And it wasn't. We were very lucky. Yeah. No, def definitely lucky that it was only the the face wash situation you were thinking. It was you're just allergic. Yes. <laughs> um, how did you reveal the news when you found out? Like Ben, how did you find out from Aaron that this was happening? I was with you when when she took the test. I was scared to look at the test. He looked at it and told yeah. me. Yeah. And so. And he said it says you're pregnant, and I was like, stop. That's not funny. And he's like, I'm not joking. It says you're pregnant. And then. <laughs> We told Helen that she was going to have a, a sibling, and she said, it's a Gail. It's a Gail. And she said, because uh, Mallory, who's on the show, had, you know, just had Lottie, and um, Helen said, like, Lottie? And we were like, well, yeah, maybe, but it might be a boy. We don't know. And she said, no, it's a Gail. It's a Gail. Oh, she, so she already called it. She knew instantly, yes. 100% certain. Yeah, she she just knows. Big sis knows these things. Um, when she found out that she'd have this responsibility, uh, and you know she's going to have the little girl as her little sister, um, what were her initial reactions besides saying it's a girl? Uh, she's like, okay. Well, no, when we when well, she's we, three, she wasn't even three yet. So when she, we confirmed it, yeah, we we kept saying like, you know, you're going to be a big sister, and, and she'd be like, when. <laughs> okay well it's gonna be a while you know next year this morning we had a doctor's appointment and she said uh when we were leaving is the baby gonna come home she said are you bringing are you bringing her home we were like oh, not today i hope not today, <laughs> oh, not today. <laughs> and uh but when we when it was confirmed that we were having a girl we were in Wetumpka and we would uh, we would meet up for lunch every day at this hotel because our, our house was outside of town. This was different. It was a blood test, not an ultrasound. So was, we were in Wetumpka when we got the phone call from yeah, the they blood work. Us. And, uh, and we said, Helen, you were right. It's a girl. And she did this big dance and, you know, this <laughs> very like, first she screamed, it's a girl. And then she did her dance and yeah. it was very dramatic. It was the most funny video we have ever made of Helen. It is the best. Has she tried to give a name yet to you guys, or is she just calling her girl or sister? Does she have a we, name? At all? She says my baby sister all the time. We have a name. We're just keeping it close, but um, yeah. 
Yeah, so she calls her by her name and says, what's my sister doing? And is my sister and crying? She, has, she asked, mommy, does my sister cry a lot? And I was like, well, not yet. She will. She will, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, get ready. She will cry. <laughs> Just That's going to be a coming. lot of crying. She's asking about that a lot lately. Like, is she going to cry a lot, mama? And I'm like, yeah. And she says, why? Oh, That's all she can do. Baby. Right. <laughs> yes when she starts talking that won't stop either you know it all just keeps coming um how is she doing helen i know she broke her leg a few months ago she was playing at the park the cast she is gone leg. now she yeah. has a brand new leg she tells everybody she sees yeah. i've got a brand new leg and mm -hmm. uh she shows it off her doctor told her um that she can do whatever she wants. She'd go back to ballet. Her ballet teacher told her she didn't miss a beat. She is right on with everybody else. Now she's doing all she can to break another leg. <laughs> learning how to ride a big girl bike and she's crashed it like three times and my nerves are just shot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and every ben time. Is like, Ben's like, I'm babe, like, you just, you just, just gotta let her she's, fall. She's, she's gonna be fine. She's gonna be fine. I so like, she, she's a strong woman, little woman. She's yeah, she is an independent oh my gosh, little she's thing. Independent. But uh, it was just such a freak thing that she broke it in, at all. So now I'm just like, can you just break a bone doing nothing? <laughs> she, was, she was just sliding. It was like a little toddler fireman pole, and she had slid down like a hundred times. And at the bottom, she would twirl, and she just planted her foot wrong, and and it happened. Yeah, and so I just now I'm thinking like she's gonna break. Her arm, she's well, gonna break her collarbone. She could just break everything. The the weirdest thing from the uh, leg break is that she, so the first couple of nights, I slept on the floor next to her bed. <laughs> this is funny. And I would I would hold her hand through the, through the rail through until the she fell asleep and then I'd fall asleep. And if she woke up in the night, cause her leg would be hurting and she'd wake up and call out and I'd be right there, you know. And she got used to that. So then when we came home, she, you know, we were, we didn't want to make a habit of that. And so she wanted me to she sleep. She wasn't in pain anymore, but she was like, daddy, could you just sleep on the toy room couch? Which is right below her room. She feels like that's closer. And so now she believes that that's where Ben sleeps every night. So earlier we were interviewing somebody <laughs> for a position. On a love seat in the toy room. <laughs> Helen came out and was talking to this lady and was she like she said hi miss holly my daddy sleeps on the toy room couch every night <laughs> and daddy has never slept on that couch it, it's like this offer like why is daddy sleeping <laughs> and on we're the like, couch no 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 she's she's yes he is and then i'm like but not really i'm just kidding it's it, yeah <laughs> she's um, she's trying to she's trying to start a whole thing going on over at the house we're like no 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 <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. So you're not you're not sleeping on the toy room couch, but I know that you did make Helen's crib. Now, yeah. is she moving to the big girl bed? How how is that? Yeah. The big girl bed. It nearly killed Ben, but she did it. She I, uh, didn't even. She never tried to get out of her baby crib. He built for her. She loved it. She was proud of it. Every night, she'd say, "My daddy built that for me." But she's over three years old now and perfectly capable of going to the potty by herself in the night and we were thinking like do you do you want to get a big girl bed yet and she was like i mean okay so she did and we got her a big girl bed and even though i mean you know we're had no trouble transitioning six months seven months from having to use the crib yeah with the baby. she'll be in a bassinet for a while and but she wanted to go ahead and do it and so she's in a big girl bed and she tells everybody that uh her sister is going to sleep in her in the baby bed in the yeah. baby room yeah but helen has a big girl but she tells and everybody she is not a baby i love that well it looks like listen helen's got it all covered so you guys don't have anything to worry about with her she's good she's, she's ready to be uh this child's other mother yeah yes they're all <laughs> three my, baby. Be my mother <laughs> no <laughs> helen just is she loves to tell ben like what i need to be doing take your shoes off when you come in the house daddy they're dirty daddy you smell like gasoline go take a shower daddy oh. don't lay on the bed you have sawdust on you like she's a neat freak like me which i'm <laughs> super psyched about honestly 
Thank well, you. you have this to look forward to. Three ladies in the house coming Three up. Ladies. And there you go. I'm excited about it, though. He says he always knows where he should be and what he I should be doing. I will always know where I should be and what I should be doing. <laughs> That's how, yep, that's it. They're keeping you in line. So that's a good thing. You're organizers. <laughs> yes. I, I, I definitely, I, I want to get into to the show, obviously, too. But I'm having so much fun talking about the family with you guys because this is so cute. Um, I know that you've spent a lot of time over this past year traveling um, in your Airstream camper, which, by the way, sounds amazing. I would love to do that. Um, how has it been? being pregnant as well as having Helen and you guys, you know, trying to make it all work. How, how has that been? Well, making three TV shows at the same time during a pandemic while pregnant and raising a toddler is the hardest and while traveling, because one of those shows was in a different state, right? The hardest thing we've ever, ever, yeah. ever, ever done. I concur. I can't imagine having two kids and one normal job, one TV show. Right. Well, could possibly be harder I'm knocking on wood <laughs> yeah, it was the but the, i think it's going to be easier to have two kids in our one normal show like yeah. the way 2020 went for us i know it was like for a lot of people it was excuse me i know that for a lot of people 2020 was like horrible top to bottom yeah but for the first three months we were working on hometown it wasn't that big of a deal it was you know it was easy ish then quarantine set in and we, you know, we camped out at home like everybody. And, you know, I think that for a lot of Americans in the beginning, it was like, you know, okay, this is great. I'm taking a break. I'm spending time with my family. Right. And we loved it. And then like, I just happened to get on one day. I was, you know, we had this Airstream we had just finished and we hadn't gone anywhere. We'd camped out in the yard twice in it and had camped out on family land once. And I was looking online and I was seeing all these campgrounds were open. Like they had the pools closed. They had Playground closed. playgrounds closed wow. that you could go and camp out. And so we started going, I mean, it was like every weekend there for like three months, we were somewhere different camping. And so then that was great. And then we started filming and it was. Well, our year just went from normal to nothing for three months right. to absolutely everything all at the same time. Right. You're, you're having a baby. You're doing three shows. It, it just was like really jarring, I guess. A lot of whiplash. It's a lot of whiplash. I was yeah. gonna say, did the two of you have a moment to yourselves to really just say, oh wow, this is all about to happen to us? I mean, obviously you've been you've been doing the show. Really feel that way. No, we we kind of took for granted. Because that, like with with home, honestly, there was a moment where we thought takeover wasn't gonna happen. Because of mm. COVID of COVID because we were supposed to start filming earlier in the year in May, in May and it was going to be a relaxed schedule through we would be, film it through the summer then we would start hometown and then like you know COVID hit we quit hearing about takeover we quit we quit having meetings about it and then we started having meetings about hometown season five and it was like okay that's and they were like the schedule's gonna stay the same it, it, things are looking good nothing to worry about and we're like oh good okay i guess we'll hear about takeover soon and yeah. then... was, takeover was happening and then ben's workshop was ben's workshop was like a pipe dream it's something that i have wanted to do for a long time and i you know was tagging the network on social media anytime people would mention something like it and <laughs> And it was like, you know, hey, this is something we should do in the future. Yeah. And then they wanted to do it right then while we right. were doing other shows, and, uh, which I was great. You know, that was one of those things like I was tired and it was a lot it of was work. was such a joy for him. But it was so much fun. It was something I always wanted to do. So it was, you know, I mean, it was fun going to work. So even though I was wore out and my brain was fried. I was still happy to be there. So yeah, you, you put it out into the universe and look what happened. It, it, it happened for you. <laughs> so, and, and busy is good. And now you guys can take a little breather for a second. Yeah. <laughs> fixing to hit maternity leave. Yeah. The train is coming through town. It's very loud. I'm sorry. I love that. I, I was like, wow, is that a train? <laughs> it's like a hundred yards from our building. That's why it's so loud. Sorry. So I, I want to keep with, no, it's, it's good. It's good. It's it's fun to have that in the background. Um, and I want to keep with obviously hitting the road. Hometown takeover. 
HGTV received over 5,000 submissions for the show. How was Wetumpka, Alabama selected? And again, as a tiny town, what makes it so special for you guys just being a part of that? Well, well HGTV made the decision. Yeah, so they, we're they thankful that we didn't down. have to say no to anybody. Right. Yeah. At one point, so like, we didn't towns. know there were so many towns. And they were all like, they all sounded so like, this would be an awesome show. These people's this is hearts we were so like in the right place about wanting to make their towns better. And anyway, I don't know how HGTV made the final decision, yeah. um, but ultimately we were super thrilled about it because um, we had wanted to visit this town just incidentally right? Years, because the movie Big Fish is completely filmed there and it's my all time favorite movie. And um, we just never done it. We had never gotten the chance. We, ben was like, let's do it for your birthday. And then something would happen and we couldn't. Let's yeah. go for our anniversary. And then something would happen and we couldn't. So we got so, to have four months. And yeah, we, don't go. we had never been. Yeah. We had always wanted to go. And then there was, at one point, there were three, we were told there were three towns and we were told what those towns were. And they said, it's it's probably going to be one of these three we're waiting on a few producers to sign off on them and it was like when we heard the three names one of the towns was a town that i had been in several times and so i, I knew that town pretty well and i was like oh man you know that'd be great because I, I already kind of know Isn't the lay there? of the land and then the other town was a town i had never um i had never been to but my i asked my parents everybody in my family and my dad was like, yeah, been there several times. I used to, my dad's a preacher, but he's also he used to be a truck driver. And he said, I used to haul something there. I can't remember what he hauled. And then the other town, we were like, that name is really familiar. Why do we know that town? Yeah. Because we and then, Yeah. And then, and, and you mentioned Big Fish, obviously being shot in that town. Um, you even have an, uh, Cheryl Crow joining, I mean, Okay, so Cheryl is lovely. That's a Airstream That's a crazy time story. In. That's an time Airstream in. story. She, re, we're friends with the Stapletons, Morgan and Chris. Okay. And Cheryl is too. And Cheryl reached out to them to say, could you give me Aaron and Ben's number? I want to talk to them about designing some Airstreams for me. She has some old Airstreams she wanted us to work on. And we talked and then COVID happened. And so we just never right. got to We never did anything. And then when it came time for uh, this Wetumpka project and we wanted to have somebody, they were like, how could we have like a musician or some kind we of event do a big to do celebration. something to celebrate Wetumpka? Who would be interested? And Cheryl loved hometown and had told us like she's from small town Missouri and how passionate she was about small town America and doing whatever you can to preserve it and revitalize it. So we were like, so Cheryl, <laughs> you remember that time you said... We should work together yeah, or something. Yeah, we totally did. And so she came, and it was really, really cool. So cool to surprise with Tumka like that. Yeah, I was going to say, when you have moments like that, and someone like Cheryl Crow, who appreciates, who's from a small town, who understands what you guys are doing, I wonder how how emotional will will these you know episodes be? What will we see? Because you are doing a dozen major renovations to yeah. help such a town and celebrate it's gonna pull a lot Itch of heartstrings yeah these it episodes is, are very very special like every time we would come home and we would tell our friends about the people we were working with you know and you know we'd be like oh this person you know she does this children's like you know kind of like a camp during the summer where she makes sure that all these kids have something to do and she makes sure they have breakfast and lunch every day and it's hundreds of kids. Like, she teaches them life skills and then the other family we're working with they fed all like thousands of volunteers after the tornado hit with Tumka and and like our friends here in Laurel were just like what is this place like is everyone yeah. like this? is everyone in Wetumpka this amazing charitable loving giver and we're like well that was the point of the show was to find those people right and help them however we could. Do you know how many people are in the population of, of what's it's like 8, I want to say it's 8,000. Yeah. Wow. Is that right? yeah. Laurel is 18,000 and for 8,000. We're from the big city. Yeah, Laurel's a big, <laughs> big city. Um, but yeah, it's, it's I, so I want to say it's 8,000. That may be totally wrong. We may have just totally Let's lied Google to it. you. Google will know. 
we're just we're just making it up as we go <laughs> Um, for the show, though, for those who obviously are fans of yours and who've been tuning in, but also for those who have yet to tune in, why is this a must watch? I'm actually looking at the population. It'll drive now. him crazy if he doesn't know the population. <laughs> he has um, 6,500. We're so, so close, 6,500. Oh, you gave him some. You gave yes. him some. Um, it's just, it's, I think it's an important show to watch because small town America is valuable. Yeah. And I think that it's overlooked and it's undervalued. And this is this well, is the heart and soul of, of America, I think. There's a, so yeah. many, so much flavor exists in small towns. And I want people to see what's so special about small town America that it's not well, and it's not just small town America. It's it's what somebody told one of our producers, Lindsay Widehorn, a great friend of ours, told us one time. I was in New York and a guy wearing a Yankees hat, a flat bill with black rim glasses and covered in tattoos, bumped into like made a, he bumped me on the shoulder. And when I turned around, he said, hometown, I love your show. And it was, you know, this moment of like, holy cow, like you're from like, I don't know, somewhere up here and yeah. you're from Brooklyn or somewhere, Manhattan. And you like our show. And she said, well, everybody is from somewhere. Everybody has a place where they grew up. Yeah. Even, if it's Flatbush. Even if it's Flatbush. And it's, you know, it may be a small town, but everybody has this dream of wherever it is they're from. Thriving. Thriving. Being yeah. that like, dream place in their mind. And I think that that's you the- you can always go back to. And that's the case for Wetumpka is it was, what we were trying to do there was what we were doing here in Laurel is make a place where- our kids can grow up and be proud of it. And then, you know, and one have day opportunities. and have opportunity there. Cause yeah. that's the thing, like no town, whether it's Laurel or Los Angeles or Kansas city, if there's no opportunity there for people, then it will eventually dry up and die. Yeah. Right. There so, won't be, yeah. It won't be any more growth or, or any opportunity there. So right. I, I, for one, appreciate what you guys do and the way you're breaking it down to me right now too, because you're shining a light on places that probably wouldn't get that. So, yeah, I hope that, um, people all over America can see their town in Wetumpka. Yeah. That it becomes emblematic in that way. 